Good morning and welcome to St David's in the heart of Craggy Don and to everybody watching on, at home online. As we continue to move forward to find our new normal, we would like to reintroduce serving refreshments after Sunday morning services. For this to happen, we will need a team of people and someone responsible for overseeing the organisation of it and the rotor. If you're interested in joining the team, please give your name to any steward. I'm one, Jill's another, Maria, so several of us here. Um, and a meeting will then be arranged so that we can discuss how that's going to happen as we move forward. Thank you so much. So this morning, it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome Frances Williams. She is a local steward um, here in the circuit, but also she's a member here at St David's. A very, very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Good morning. It's nice to be here today. Our call to worship is from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, where hope is in the Lord their God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. Praise the Lord and worship his holy name. Our first hymn is number 34 in Singing the Faith, O oh, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness.
Now our prayers of adoration, thanksgiving and confession, let us pray. Lord God, source of wisdom, love, hope and peace, we proclaim your glory and bow before you in adoration. We come with joy before you, God the Father. We thank you for the glorious resurrection of your Son. We come with hope before you, God the Creator. We thank you for giving us responsibility for your world. We come with love before you, God the Shepherd. We thank you for giving us the task of caring for your people. Creator God, maker of heaven and earth, high mountains, green valleys, salt seas, running rivers, and creatures great and small, we thank you for the colour and variety of our world and for the diversity of people in it. We thank you for those who love and care for us. On the first Sunday of the new Methodist year, we praise you that you are the beginning of all our goodness, the wellspring of all our loving, and the source of all our freedom. But we confess that we have not always cared for your world and for other people. So often we have put our own needs and desires first. We have worshipped you with our lips, but not with our hearts. We have put our trust in princes and mortals who cannot save. We do not live as we might, and we fall short of your glory. We are sorry and ask your forgiveness. Help us to follow the example of our Lord and Saviour Jesus, so that others too may know and love you. Amen. We have two readings this morning, one from Isaiah and one from Mark's Gospel, and Charlotte is going to read them for us. Thank you, Charlotte. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Caramel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sands will become a pool, will become a pool. the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing, everlasting joy crowning their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence a secret. In fact, as soon as she heard him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, 
For such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed, and the demon had gone. Thank you very much for reading for us this morning. What makes you afraid? What scares you? We've heard, we've sung the word fear and we've heard the word fear a few times already this morning. Do you have a strategy for overcoming your fears? Or do you just accept them? Sometimes fear is good because it prevents us from getting into dangerous situations and keeps us safe. Some people enjoy the adrenaline rush of doing a dangerous activity, but fear can also de debilitate. It can prevent us from moving forward or from trying something new. Phobias are exaggerated fears, and many of us have them. I am an acrophobe. I'm scared of heights. But I decided to do a treetop walk a few years ago to try and overcome my fear. A Jeff aerophobe has a fear of crossing bridges. Don't know any, anybody has that fear here. Well, my daughter lives in Anglesey, so it's a good job I'm not afraid, afraid of bridges or I'd never get to see her. Herithophobe has a fear of wrinkles and a coin onophobe a fear of a room full of people. So if you had that, you wouldn't be here today, I'm sure. Fear is a re very real emotion. And the biblical writers recognise this. The words, do not be afraid, appear 366 times in the Bible once for each day of the year. They are set to different people in a variety of situations. Abraham was called by God to leave his country and to travel to the God land God would show him. He heard the word of the Lord in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. David writes in Psalm 56, when the Philistines had seized him, when I am afraid, I will trust in God, whose word I praise, I will not be afraid. When Jairus, the synagogue ruler, was told that his daughter had died, Jesus said to him, Don't be afraid, just believe. And she was healed. In John's Gospel, these words spoken by Jesus to his disciples are often read at funerals. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. They give us comfort. Most scholars now agree that the first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah were written by Isaiah of Jerusalem, a man of good connections with access to the royal courts and to the government. He was keen to emphasize the importance of David as God's chosen ruler, and he spoke of a future king, descended from David's line, who will bring God's salvation to Israel. This future king would delight in the fear of the Lord. Here, the word fear means to hold in reverence or awe. When we lose that fear, we are in trouble. The words of chapter 35, which Charlotte read to us this morning, were written to a people in exile. They were in exile in Babylon. It's a vision of God bringing his people safely home after a time of destruction and doom. It's full of joy and hope and new life. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. 
Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, do not be afraid. Your God will come to save you. The ransomed of the Lord will return. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. What encouraging words for an exiled people. I wonder how many of today's exiles have any hope of ever returning to their homeland or that their children or grandchildren will ever return. Isaiah's words offer hope in a seemingly hopeless situation, but we know that the exiles did eventually return. There are millions of displaced people in our world. How do we offer them hope? We've seen scenes at Kabul airport of desperate parents handing over their small children to American and British troops so that they can have a better life. Imagine how full of fear those parents are to do that. People will take extreme measures to protect their children from danger. In our reading from Mark's Gospel, a mother took her courage in both hands by going to see Jesus. Her daughter needed help, and she was willing, willing to flout convention and judgment in order to have her daughter healed. In those times, women did not speak to, to male non-family members, and Jesus was a Jew someone of a different race and background. But her situation was desperate. A desperate situation, as we've recently seen, can overcome fear. I'm always taken aback by Jesus' initial response to the woman. He seems harsh and dismissive, but she stands her ground. She doesn't give up, but persists in her quest. Jesus recognises her courage and her need, and her daughter is healed. Would we have her tenacity in such a situation? Or would we give up or be too afraid to ask in the first place? Jesus is challenged by the Syrophoenician woman and responds in grace to her faith. Isaiah has a vision that the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame will leap like a deer, the mute tongue shout for joy. Describing people as blind, deaf, lame and dumb was a common expression for the oppressed and the needy, those without control over their lives and subject to the will of others. After our reading about the girl being healed, Jesus goes on to Decapolis and he heals a man brought to him by others who is dumb and blind and deaf. The people who brought him believe that Jesus could free him from his disabilities and give him fullness of life. And Jesus did give him a voice and the ability to hear other voices. Who are the people today who don't have a voice? And how can we ensure that their voices are heard and their needs met? The Paralympics has given many people the opportunity to excel in sports that at one time would have been denied them. They've proved that their physical disabilities are not a barrier to success and fullness of life. We may not have an obvious need, but each one of us in some way is in need of healing, whether it's a body, mind or spirit.
Past hurts can haunt us and prevent us living fully in the present. Fear of the future can mar our enjoyment of now. And physical ailments can isolate us from our community. When my 46-year-old son was a baby, I remember waking suddenly in the night and thinking, what sort of a world have I brought this child into? Since then, wars, oppression, 9-11, terrorist attacks, climate change have made the world a less safe place. And now I'm anxious about the future of my grandchildren. But wherever there is fear and conflict, danger and need, Christ is there. As his disciples, we are called to offer his healing touch to all. Whatever their age, ethnicity or ability. Like the Syrophoenician woman, we need to have courage to speak up for the vulnerable, to stand for justice, and to recognize our own need for healing and forgiveness. We cannot measure how God in Christ heals or answers prayer, but we know that when God's love fills our hearts, his spirit enables us to overcome our fears and offer his healing to our broken world. Amen. Our next hymn is number 655 in Singing the Faith. We cannot measure how you heal.
Those words came from the island of Iona, from the Iona community. Now our prayers of intercession and petition. There is a response. God of grace and God of glory, will you respond, let your kingdom come. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the richness and diversity of each unique identity. We pray for each member of the body of Christ represented here, that we may be filled anew with your living breath. Teach us to cherish and respect each other, the universe we inhabit, and all those who look and sound different from ourselves. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. We thank you for the patient endurance of so many who suffer so much. And we pray for those known to us who have recently been diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses. May they know your presence, your healing, and your upholding. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. We pray for those who are at a new beginning in their lives. Ministers starting in new appointments. Those starting at a new school, college, university or employment. And we ask your blessing on Emma and her family as she prepares to go to Bristol University. When we are uncertain and anxious, excited and expectant, teach us to trust in your guidance. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. On the fifth day of the month, we pray for Christians in Cameroon and Nigeria. For those affected by civil unrest and political uncertainty in Cameroon. For elected officials in Nigeria, that they may allocate resources necessary for combating the pandemic and for putting an end to the terror caused by kidnappings, Boko Haram, killer herdsmen and bandits. May your followers remain faithful in this time of a global crisis. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. In a time of silence, we pray for people and situations on our hearts today. I ask your blessing on Bill, who comes to this church, and Ian and Jean, my former neighbours. God of grace and God of glory, let your kingdom come. And a prayer from the prayer handbook by William Reed Huntington. Grant us, O Lord, in all our doubts and uncertainties, the grace to ask what you would have us do, that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, that in your light we may see light, 
and in your path may not stumble. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 682 in Singing the Faith. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. Go now in the light, the love, and the power of God to love God and one another. Go with open hands, hearts, minds, and ears in his name and for his sake. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit be with you always. Amen. I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped our tears away. Stepped in and saved the day But once again I say amen And it's still raining And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I am with you And as your mercy falls I raise my hand
I will pray. 